Hello. Hello, doctor. Me. Okay, my name is Stephen. I have a I have an enlarged prostate. I was given the Flomax for a long time, and I even was on Abadot for about a year. And after I developed prostate cancer, very small, they caught it in time with a uh, biopsy. So I elected to get beam radiation, the 40 treatments of radiation. Now the doctor, my doctor that I was going to, he stated, because I had questioned him about any surgery, he stated that surgery is not likely because of some kind of a fibrosis or something with the prostate gland and it would produce incontinence if I had surgery done. Would you, do you agree on that or well, any other options besides yeah, surgery? Yeah, you've had, you've had radiation already, right? Yes, that okay. was about a year ago. Okay, so let me tell you what, what I feel about all the options. And when we talk about prostate cancer, there are low-risk prostate cancers and there are high-risk prostate cancers. And you've heard of the classification called Gleason score. We urologists use that to figure out exactly what type of prostate cancer we're dealing with here. In, yeah. my, in, in my practice, I like to cure the patients, remove the prostate, and there are many advantages of removal of the prostate, which uh, when you remove the prostate, you're going to know exactly what type of prostate cancer you have. You yeah. will find out how much cancer you have in the prostate because that needle biopsy is a random biopsy and doesn't give you always the best picture. Yeah. What's, in, what's important is six weeks after prostate surgery, your PSA should go down to zero and should stay zero for the rest of your life. So the advantages of the surgery is that the follow-up is very easy. Now, what happens if you do the surgery, assuming that you have a qualified, experienced surgeon and the risk of incontinence would be low and, and some of the complications that you talked about, if the cancer recurs after surgery, then I would use a low-dose radiation as a backup plan. Mm -hmm. Some of the side effects of radiation, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, is a secondary chance of rectal cancer. Patients can get rectal bleeding and bladder bleeding. Side effects of radiation comes as time goes on. So if I can avoid giving patients radiation and cure them with good quality of life, that's what mm -hmm. I would prefer. If you're doing well, then I would just continue watching the the PSA. Yeah, but the thing is that my PSA, okay, it's down to within normal levels. It's 3.5. But uh, the thing is, I already had the radiation. So what am I up to now? Can I still have surgery or it, do it, I have to wait? If the PSA, PSA should go way down, P, your PSA should go down to 0.4 or 0.5. It's a different measurement as what we use for surgery. If your PSA doesn't go down or continues to go up, you need to come in and we need to <coughs> do another biopsy. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, but is, is surgery is still available after the radiation that I had? I can, I can do it. It's a risky procedure and it should be done in the hands of qualified surgeon. And I'll be happy to talk to you if that, ha if that comes. Yes, the answer is it is possible, but it, it's a complicated case and it should be done in centers of excellence with qualified surgeons. Λοιπόν, right. καλή σας νύχτα. Ευχαριστούμε. Καλησπέρα σας. Σας ακούω. Κύριε Καστανά. Ναι, ναι. Μια ερώτηση έχω στον γιατρό. Ναι, λίγο πιο δυνατά oh. απευθυνθείτε στον γιατρό. Ναι. Αν μιλάτε αγγλικά, πείτε τα oh, στα αγγλικά. Όχι, ελληνικά θα σας τα πω. Ε, εντάξει, θα... κανένα πρόβλημα. Βέζικα. Πείτε τα, ναι. Ε, είχαμε βρει ότι είχε ένα κάνσερ στην πρώτη βιοψία πολύ λίγο. Και του κάναμε το Shaper Knife. Τι γνώμη έχει ο γιατρός για το Shaper Knife, το κάναμε στο Long Island. Μάλιστα. She had, uh, her husband had prostate cancer, actually they found it on a biopsy and they had uh, done the procedure with the Cyber Knife. What is your opinion on the Cyber Knife? And that's funny that she's asking this question because I wanted to pick your brain about that as well. How, how old is the patient? Πόσο χρονών είναι ο σύζυγος? Oh, 63. 63. 63. 63. You, what, uh, what type of prostate cancer? Was it a low risk or high risk? Uh, no. <coughs> High risk. High risk. And did they give him any kind of uh, hormone? Uh, uh, no, he gets the Flomax once oh. a day. Okay. So... Uh, he gets a blood test every two or three months. Okay. I think CyberKnife uh, for s individual patients is a good treatment. Um, 
typically you have a 63-year-old, he's still a very young patient, Peter. So especially for high-risk prostate cancer patients, I rather remove the prostate for many reasons. Because if this patient's cancer recurs, which the, sometimes with high-risk prostate cancer it can after radiation or surgery, the choices are very limited after radiation. It's very difficult to do surgery after radiation, but it's very feasible and it's very easy to give radiation after surgery. Why the distinction? Why the difference? Because when you radiate the prostate like this with cyber knife or other modalities, the tissue turns into a cement. It gets very sticky to the rectum, and for us to be able to go back to do the surgery, the anatomy has changed, and it's very difficult to do that operation. So the way I do it is first remove the prostate. You get a tremendous amount of information as to what type of cancer, how much it is, and get to that PSA. Their continence and sexual function returns in a short period depending on their recovery. As long as their PSA is zero, they're cured from this cancer. If the cancer comes back after surgery, then you can give them radiation. So you haven't burned any bridges and we have all the options open. This patient, he can go on for a few years. If his cancer comes back, our choices would be very limited. And that's why I don't want to go through these options too quickly. Now a 63-year-old is a very young patient. We have people coming in in their 80s and, and so on. And that's because of the cardiac stent, Lipitors and Crestors, men are living longer. Now, 75-year-old is not. You had a 78-year-old on the phone. So we want to treat these uh, patients in their 60s, still cure them and remove the prostate. Καταλάβατε τι είπε ο γιατρός. Κατάλαβα όλο. Το καταλάβατε όλο, μπράβο. Εμείς ευχαριστούμε. Γεια σας. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. Γεια σας. Ναι, κύριε Γιώργο, σας ακούμε. Είμαι... Είμαι... Είναι 90 χρονών. 90 χρονών. Δεν, δεν ακούγεστε για 90, ακούγεστε νότερος. Πώς? Λοιπόν, στην Ελλάδα είχα κάνει μία ε, ε, εσύρυση. Δεν έγινε εσύρυση, αλλά μου βάλανε ένα δακτήρι μέσα στο... ένα δακτήρι. Μέσα. Με καταλάβατε. Όχι, δεν καταλάβαμε. Δεν έγινε, αλλά μου βάλανε μέσα ένα ανακτηρίδι στο εργαλείο. Μάλιστα. Και τι έγινε. Έχει το CD implant and radiation. Είναι mm -hmm. 90-year-old και probably got treated with radiation, which is the appropriate treatment for older patients. But one of the uh, messages from this is that now you see a lot of men in their 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. And that's why that 63-year-old, which... Uh, you know, I don't want to to, to uh, disappoint him. I'm sure he got good treatment, uh, but the, the way we uh, treat these patients are different uh, because they live uh, longer, uh, and that's why removal of the prostate Absolutely. for people that are living longer is much better.